Time to hear from Aaron Boone about getting this win. It is the manager's report brought to you by Geico. Aaron, just how badly did you guys need that one? Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, we needed, we needed that. So did enough, did enough things um, um, well. You know, obviously the bullpen was terrific, um, especially there in extra innings, you know. Uh, <clears throat> Coming in, holding them down. Lucas Litke, after throwing two innings yesterday, comes in, has a good inning. Sessa was really strong in his his one inning there, and uh, did enough things offensively. You know, I thought I thought overall pretty good at bats against Glass now, which isn't always the easiest thing to do. Um, you know, thought we had it there in the ninth when DJ put a really good at bat on and lined out. So um, some better things across the board. Not close to where we need to be, but, um, you know, an important day today to, to pull that one out. And a great A-B there by, by Frazier to finish it off. Meredith, you got to unmute again. Sorry about that. Uh, you mentioned the at bat by Frazier there in extra innings, but what did you also think of that defensive play to keep it tied in the eighth? You know, I, I don't think he got a great read on it, so the recovery on it and to lay out and, and be able to secure it was, I mean, obviously huge at the time, but, but a great play to be able to lay out and hang on to it. He needed every inch of it. Good, Meredith. Uh, Matt Robertson, please unmute. Hey, Aaron. Matthew Robertson from the New York Daily News here. I wanted to ask you specifically about Licky. You mentioned another good outing for him. Um, I'm curious what you've seen, particularly on that curveball that no one can seem to hit that's made him so effective this year. Um, you know, he's 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 been great. You know, I, I would say as good as his numbers are, he's pitched better than that. You know, he's the times he's gotten hit, he's been kind of dinked and dunked a little bit. Um, so really all his pitches, you know, his fastball plays way up. Um, he He's really able to spin the breaking ball. You know, he cuts the ball a little bit. Um, he's been huge for us. And, and today, after pitching two innings yesterday, was, was probably staying away from him for the most part today. And obviously, once we got to extra innings, we called down just to see. He wanted the ball and, and came in and had a real efficient inning against the top of their lineup. Um, so he's been, you know, he's been everything we, we hoped he, we were seeing in spring training. He's carried that into the season and, and been really consistent for us. Justin. Right, and then with Andujar, uh, second Oppo home run in as many days. He wasn't really a guy who went Oppo a lot before this season. Is that something that you guys are trying to work on with him, or is it just happening naturally? No, Miggy's a line to line guy, though. Miggy at his best is a you know, bat to ball, lot of line drives, and does spray the ball around, and occasionally you know hit for some power the other way. And um, so good to see him back to back days do that. He had some other hard contacts in these last couple of days. So, you know, good to see Miggy, you know, starting to impact it a little bit. Justin Shackle, go ahead. Hey, Aaron, I know you've uh, briefly touched on the bullpen's performance, but how do you sum up what they mean to this team on a night like this? I mean, they've been great all year. Um, you know, it's no secret that our our pitching has carried us. The starters have been really strong for us, but the bullpen's been there from Jump Street, um, and it, it's allowed us to close out most of the games we we should and are supposed to win. But you know, a night like tonight, where it's a you know scratch and claw back and forth, and no, you know, no one's having for them to keep the, them at bay. Um, you know, especially there in extra innings, two inning, two extra innings where a runner's on second was huge. Um, but that bullpen has been, you know, everything we could have hoped from the start of the season. And each half inning and extras with no runner on second with the new rules, what is the feeling like in the dugout? Is, is there a heightened intensity in there? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, it, Anytime you're in an extra inning game, obviously you're in a tie ball game, and you know, and you know, we're we're obviously in a division rival game, and you know, so there's 
there's intensity regardless uh, once you get into extra innings. But obviously, that runner on second, you know, is is an added element, uh, added urgency, I guess. Um, so maybe it does add a little bit of intensity, but you know, you shouldn't need much help with that when you're in extra innings. Randy Miller, go ahead. Aaron, you had said uh, yesterday that Zach Britton would pitch tonight. Yeah. If everything turned out he did not pitch, uh, did he have a setback? Or no, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, he uh, he, threw a, he threw a side yesterday. He's pitching tomorrow, and then he'll pitch again Saturday. Yeah, okay. sorry about that. Greg I Joyce. I misspoke. Sorry. Greg Joyce, go ahead. Aaron, were you trying to stay away from Glaber as much as possible, or was there a reason you didn't go to him earlier? Um, a little bit. A little bit, but you know I like G in that matchup, and then I knew I could you know shoot Wader there uh, for defense or to run for 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 Giancarlo had he got on. Um, so I just like that matchup in that spot, and was you know just a little more inclined to go G there with Glaber today. Andy Martino. Uh, Aaron, you've seen some such good stuff from Sanchez defensively lately. Uh, do you do you worry that a moment like what he had on the base paths immediately impacted his confidence uh, that he took it out to the field there? No, I wasn't worried about taking it out to the field. Um, you know, I'm. You know, you know some of the mistakes he's made on the base paths we get we got to clean up and get better at obviously, but no, I don't worry about that carrying over into his defense or his offense. It's just, you know, something that, you know, it's that fine line of, you know, not wanting him to uh, be too restricted out there and start, you know, lacking aggression or, you know, fearing of running into a mistake, but just being, making sure he's really educated on, on, you know, where they're playing him you know, what balls he can advance on, things like that. So it's just something we got to continue to, to reinforce and, and drive home. Well, running uh, to third on that, with the, with the ball hit to his right there, I mean, is there any other way to explain that? But just Was it to his right or to his left? It might have it actually been because the shortstop was moving to the left. Look, it wasn't the right play, but that one can be a little bit, in between sometimes sometimes if the shortstop's moving to his left if it, but Maggie hit the ball pretty pretty firm so, and yeah. and Gary's not the fastest guy in the world uh, you know so you know it's obviously a, a mistake read he's got to absolutely freeze on that but that one's at least a little more tricky than a ball that's right in front of you in the hole uh when when the shortstop's moving to his left like he was so because of how hard the ball was hit and where the fielders were, it wasn't as Exactly, as and that's just something you got to be you, – your pre-pitch preparation, um, you know, has got to be on point. you got to know exactly where the fielders are, especially as, as players move around. As the count changes, players shift a little bit more. You know, obviously you got to know where the outfielders are and the outfielders' arms and things like that, but you also got to know exactly where the infielders are playing. And, and, and then it's play. you gotta, you got to make an instinctive read. Lindsay Adler, please unmute. Aaron, you said pregame that you would have an update on Corey Kluber's latest imaging. I said, I, said he, I would know something potentially okay. today. I would probably have it tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and then – I can't sort of recall earlier in the game, were they shifting on DJ? Uh, because teams just typically haven't done that. Are you seeing them position differently against him now? No. Um, which one are you talking about? No, you're, you're, you're muted. Uh, I mean, I may have just missed it. It was, I think it was early in the game. I, remember seeing them sort of shift on him and I'm just curious if you're seeing teams no. approach him a little bit differently. No, usually they play him pretty straight up in the inf almost like a lefty, but but usually always two guys on each side. You know, they'll play the third baseman off the bag, you know, almost like a left-handed hitter and then the outfield really shades around. So that's pretty typical with what we see with DJ.